Church, how are we feeling? Bring it in, bring it in. All right, how many of you guys are excited for the snow tonight? All right, how many of us are excited for the Super Bowl? Not so much. Okay, all right, me either. But who's excited to praise our amazing God today? All right, church, let's sing this out. Ready? energy from this area right here. <laughs> I love you all. I'm just kidding. But those are the, you know, shouts my youth over there. Um, so these songs that we're, that we're singing this morning, we were talking about it as we were praying with the worship team. And everything we're saying is such an understatement. It just doesn't feel like enough because our God is so incredible. But no matter what, us singing praises to him and honoring him and giving him the glory is such a sweet, beautiful sound to his ears. Amen. 
So let's uh, worship together this morning.
awe of you. We stand in awe of you. Knowing nothing we do can deserve you. But you give yourself so freely.
together and just to worship you and focus on you. And I just want to ask that you, you bless this day and use it to glorify you and your kingdom. I want to ask all these things in your name, I pray. Amen. Good morning, Good morning. church. Good morning. Welcome to C3. Yeah. Uh, before we get to our tithes and offerings, well, Brittany's got a little bit of housekeeping we're going to run through, but uh, we are the Seolix. My name yeah. is Mike, and this is my lovely wife, Brittany. Uh, normally, we're back in the production booth. But, they let uh, us out. Sometimes they turn around and we run up here. So They did know. give us the mic, but... <laughs> well, we're the production team, so we oh, take the Oh, that's right. Um, so if you ever need Troy muted, just, you know, give us a motion. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Wouldn't do that. Okay, actually, I would. But I did warn you. Um, so before we uh, move to our tithes and off- offerings, excuse me, I want to draw your attention to the clipboard that's in the seat back in front of you. There are two separate cards. Uh, the first one is welcome guests, and we welcome you. Thank you guys for joining us today. Um, if you could fill that out and take it back to our welcome table, they have a free gift for you. Uh, please take advantage of that. And then on the ac- on the back side, there's a service or getting connected card. And here at C3, we love to serve. We love having Amen. you guys serve alongside of us. We just and we so enjoy that. And so if you could fill that out as well and turn it into the connection point, uh, production team needs some help. <clears throat> Um, you know, if you want to work with us amazing people, as well as worship and anywhere else, I mean, let's be real, Catalyst on Thursday night, Uh, (laughs) uh, please fill that out and turn it in at the connection point or uh, talk to one of us leaders as well. Um, We'd love to have you serve alongside of us. And the other great one that I really am so glad that they added is the prayer card. And it's interesting that Troy's talking about prayer today. Um, And that card is there for you. If you're someone who maybe doesn't want to come up on the end of service or maybe you're feeling like you want to privately share a prayer request, please do that on the card. There's a black box on the way out the door as well as you can just drop that off at the connection point as well. Uh, We'd love to pray for you. Um, We ask that you pray for us, but we also want to, you know, honor that as well. So please do that. Um, Yeah. And at this point, it's time for our tithes and offerings. Uh, So if we can have the ushers come forward. If this is your first time with us, don't feel obligated to give. Just let the bag pass right on by. Um, if you are a normal contributing member of tithes and offerings, don't feel obligated to put something in the bag. We don't all carry cash or checks. So <laughs> you can also go back to the connection point, do it that way, or do it online as well. So yep. dear God, I thank you and praise you. And just we want to ask that you bless these tithes and offerings and use it to further your kingdom and your church. And just want to ask that you to open the hearts and allow people to give cheerfully. We ask God in your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. So we get the privilege to give you your announcements, your upcoming things, which we dun, love. Dun, dun. Um, the first thing is this coming Sunday, February 10th, is our membership class. It's at 1 o'clock. It's right after service. There is going to be some food, and there, are, there is child care for birth up to six years old. So they, you can definitely utilize our amazing children's ministry. Um, this is a great way for you to get to know who we are, what we believe in, where we started, where we're going. Uh, it's just a great way to get to know us um, and learn about who we are as C3. So we'd love to have you come. Please make sure that you sign up so we know how much food. Um, and again, I'm going to, you know, plug in that connection point again. Um, they would love for you to sign up there too. The next thing we have is P3 coming up on the 15th. So if you like prayer, if you like praise, or if you like food, that's where you want to be. <laughs> The only thing that we ask is that you bring a side dish or something to drink to share with everybody. This is an excellent opportunity. Like Brittany said, obviously Troy's going to be talking about prayer. A little convicting. Uh, But (laughs) this is an opportunity. If you're not really comfortable praying in front of people, um, this is a great opportunity to stretch yourself a little bit. You don't have to. We're not obligating anybody to pray, but this gives you an opportunity And if you have something you need prayer for, a great thing to come to, as well as if you have praise reports, we want to hear those as well. So, and also there's going to be food. (laughs) So there's always that. We do have childcare from birth to sixth grade. Um, Oh, six years old. It's sixth grade. It's sixth grade. You're right. Because they do, it's sixth grade. Yeah, through sixth grade. All right. Um, The thing is, is we're not just going to send them in there and make them watch a VeggieTales movie. Yeah. They get to participate the same way that we do. So they have their own. I don't even want to say a mini P3. They have another P3 going on in there. So they're going to be learning how to pray and give praise. And they're going to come out here and eat with us as well. So everybody is welcome here. 
come join us for the on the 15th, and it's going to be hosted by Brad and Monica Dietering, Woo! our youth pastors here. So come and make them do some extra work. <laughs> he had to do it. Um, the next thing is something that I super am excited to share with you. Um, those of you who normally will go through all of the the events page and you go through all the processes to sign up, we now have an easier way for you. There is a, a church home app, a church center app uh, that you can download and it has all of our events, all of anything that you want to find out, all the information there. And it's almost like a, a one click wonder is what I'm calling it because I just love how easy it is. Um, it's just a quick app download. If you have or need questions or actually need help, um, any of the elders, any of the leaders, uh, Connection Point, we can all help you uh, get that downloaded and use it. But it's so great. It's, it's going to definitely make it easier for you to sign up and get involved. And the last thing we've got is where we figure out who in our church is an introvert, who's an extrovert. <laughs> so we've got two minutes to mingle. Get up, greet somebody you don't know. Let's get to know some new people. You guys are so better at sitting down when you're supposed to than first service. I'm just going to put them out there. First service is a hot mess when it comes to two minutes to mingle. I love how we have all the introverts in the house that just can't wait to sit down and not have to talk to anybody. I love it. Hey, I just got to point something out. Me and my man D-Mac, stand up Danny. Just twinning is winning today. Twinning is winning. What would you say? Same mother, different father. Or no, same mother. No, same father. same father, different mother. Same father, different mother. I messed that all the way up. Anyway, um, welcome everybody. Glad to see you all this morning. Welcome to our online audience. Glad you guys are watching online. Um, as always, it's always better to be here in person. Better late than never, but uh, glad you're watching online. Hey, I got a couple of things I just want to talk about before we get into the message. Uh, first thing is, we talked about membership meeting during our announcements. If you are a person who has made C3 your place where you're going to worship, I strongly, strongly recommend you come to the membership meeting if you haven't done so. You don't even have to sign up. You don't have to become a member. You, don't have, you, can, either, you can even come, not become a member, and continue to come. But it's important that you understand what your church believes in what we stand for, and all that good stuff, so you know that you're in the right place. Yes? So I'm going to encourage you, sign up. If nothing else, you get free food. Come on, somebody, free food. Doesn't get any better than that. So sign up online. The other thing is, next week we start a brand new series. We're going to do something we've never done before in the history of C3. You guys ready? We're going to embark on a 14-week series. 
14, actually it's going to be 15 if you count Good Friday. We're going to go all the way to Easter through the book of Mark. I guess we have some Marks in the house. Uh, all right, that was really weird. I don't even know what to do right now. I'm shook. But uh, way to go, Mark. All right, Team Mark. Uh, anyway, uh, you guys have homework, though. Come on, no one likes homework. You're supposed to go, boo, homework. All right. You guys have homework. This week, I'm going to challenge slash encourage you to read Mark chapter 1. Okay. One chapter. Because next week we're going to be talking about, guess what? Mark chapter 1. So I'm going to encourage you, get in your Bible, read Mark chapter 1, and then, spoiler alert, but the new week after that, your homework is going to be to read Mark chapter 2. I know, crazy. But we're going to go through the entire book of Mark all the way to Easter Sunday, and it's going to be awesome. I'm very excited about this. Um, like I said, we've never done a complete, you know, ver uh, chapter by chapter all the way through. So this is going to be the first time we've done that, especially a 14-week series, something we've never done. So it's going to be awesome. You don't want to miss it. So be here next week as we start that series. If you have someone who is far away from God that you know that is kind of wondering about Jesus and the character of Jesus, no better place to read about Jesus than the books written about Jesus. Come on, right? So invite somebody, invite your friends, invite your coworkers, your neighbors, invite the person you don't even like that well, invite that person, anybody. Right on? Yeah. All right, let's pray. God, we love you and we praise you. We worship you. Jesus, you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. I will never, ever tire of saying that because it is the absolute truth. Jesus, you're the reason why we're here this morning. You're the reason why we do what we do. Jesus, you came down from your lofty throne onto a wretched earth. You lived a, a perfect life and you died a brutal death. But then you rose from the dead on the third day simply because of love. Your love for us, your love for your people. So we thank you for that, Jesus, and that's why we're here to celebrate you this morning. And God, I pray that you would use my voice to be more of you and less of me. God, I can't do it without you. I would fall miserably short without you. So please, God, do what only you can do, and that is speak to a human heart. You're the vine on the branches. Apart from you, I'm nothing. So God, I pray that you would just make this work out to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just last week, a person came to me and said, hey, Troy, I got blessed, and I'm blessed to be a blessing. And so I want to bless somebody in the church. And they gave me an envelope. And they said, bless somebody with this. And I said, all right. And so I prayed. I prayed. I said, God, bring this person here that needs help. Next morning, Don brings me an email. This person says, hey, church, I hate to do this, but I'm in a bad way right now. I've tried family. I've tried friends. I've tried all these different things. There's been an error at the bank, and the bank isn't working with us. We're in a bad way. We've been praying, and is there any way you can help us? And I said, yes, sir. The amount of money, I didn't know how much. I, none of my business, the amount of money was exactly what they needed to get through and pay their bills because God answers prayer. Three weeks ago, we got, or about a month, uh, three weeks ago, a month ago, we got a loan proposal from the bank. We were doing all this work, and the bank said, here you go, C3, you can per per uh, purchase this building, here are the terms. And I said, awesome. I looked at the terms, I'm like, oh, those aren't very good terms. And we said, this is what we want. We want a 15-year fixed rate to pay off this building. That's what we want. And we looked at this, and I sent it to the elders, and we have a meeting. I said, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but this isn't very good, is it? And they said, no. And so we said, we're going to call another bank. And guess what? We called another bank. And the bank said, yeah, you've already been approved for that amount. Those terms. The lender from the first bank called me and said, hey, I understand that there has been a problem, and this loan is no longer because of the terms. I go, I go yeah, we didn't like those terms, and these are our new terms. And he said, sir, I want to go to your church. I said, what do you mean? He said, nobody is getting commercial loans at that rate, much less churches. God is smiling on you. 
And I said, you better believe it, mister. I don't want all Kramer on him. I said, yeah, I'm just kidding. Because God answers prayers. Years ago, my marriage was in shambles. My wife and I were both ready to leave. We were done. We prayed and God brought us back together. But you know what? That's the easy part, church. After there's been hurt and pain and, and your wife looks at you and says, I've fallen out of love with you, there's a lot of hurt and pain that goes into that. And trust me, she had a lot of reasons to fall out of love with me. This is definitely a two-way deal. And so she had some things and I had some things. And I had this deep sorrow in my soul. Have you ever been in a situation in your life where your soul is just dark and you can't forgive and you can't let go and you got this bitterness in you and I pray, God, I don't like feeling this way. I can't do this. And God said, I know you can't, Troy, but I can. God answered prayers. My wife prayed this prayer over and over again. She said, God, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I've fallen out of love with my husband. Please help me to fall back in love with him. Please help me to fall back in love with him. Please help me to fall back in love with him. Let me tell you, church, she can't keep her hands off me now. Exaggeration. Other way around. But anyway, because God answers prayer. My mom prayed for years and years and years about a crotchety, you guys ever see Gran Torino? The movie Gran Torino. That's my dad. Crotchety. Doesn't want to hear, don't preach to me. I don't want to hear about your religion. Over, that's all he ever said for years and years in his life when he's on the operating table and he's getting ready to possibly die, good possibility he's going to die. Doctor said he probably won't make it. And I said, Dad, do you want to receive Jesus as your Savior? And he looked at me and he said, yes. And so I walked him through this prayer and I said, Dad, pray this, believe this with me. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. Do you believe that? He said, yes. He couldn't talk, but he said, yes. He didn't die. Amazing. God answers prayer. As soon as he could talk, he said, hey, where's Troy? I want to do this for myself. I want to receive Jesus for myself with my own words. They said, well, Troy's not here anymore, but John's here. He goes, well, I guess your, your brother will do, right? <laughs> Just kidding. My brother tells a story. My brother is a pastor as well, a youth pastor. He leads people to Jesus all the time. He said, the most nervous prayer he's ever prayed is with my dad. I go, Right? You're just waiting for any minute for him to say, stop preaching at me, right? You're waiting for old dad. But Jesus changed his heart because prayer works. Today we're talking about prayer. Today's message is called the wonder of prayer. The wonder of prayer. There's a saying or a, a, uh, something going around now that's a term called FOMO. Right? Young people? FOMO. Older people? I don't know what that is. FOMO. What it means is fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. FOMO. What it means is that I've got to get my kid into choir and orchestra and volleyball and basketball and softball and ping pong and badminton because I can't let them ever miss out on anything. I've got to have my life completely chaotic because I don't want to miss out on anything. It's a fear of missing out. It's, it's, it's just a terrible place to be. I don't have fear of missing out. I don't have FOMO. I have FOFs. I got FOFs. You guys know what FOFs is, right? Something weird that Troy came up with, of course. You ready? This is mine. I have a fear of falling short. I have a fear of not measuring up. I've got voices that are always telling me you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not theological enough, you're not this, you're not that. And, and these constant insecurities are coming at me all the time. And I have false, a fear of falling short. I fear of letting God down and I fear of letting my church down. It's my fear. Let me tell you something. Everyone in this room has a foe. You just got to fill in the next two letters because we all have fear of. Am I right? We have a fear of, fear of failure, fear of not measuring up, 
Fear of fill in the blank, but we all have a foe. Fear of. What I found is oftentimes fear blocks our prayer and it hampers our prayer life. Fear will keep us far away from God. Fear will keep us from trusting in God. So today we're going to go through a very familiar passage of Scripture that we refer to as the Lord's Prayer. Now I'm sure probably 70% of the people in here, if I started saying, Our Father, Right, we're not going to get to the rest of it because we all say it different. We always say, trespasses, we mess that part up, right? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Forgive me, for those who trespass and we use different words. Anyway, so we're not going to go through it all, but we're going to read through it. And we're going to maybe look at the Lord's Prayer again for the first time in a brand new way. So turn your Bibles, if you have them, to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 5. In Jesus' famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, he stops in the middle and he says, let me show you guys how to pray. And today he's stopping us where we're at and he said, hey, let me show you guys how to pray. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. I'm reading now the NIV. Last week I messed, or last service I messed with the uh, Team, uh, the tech team, because I read out of the NLT and I told them specifically, I read out of the NIV, so they had read NIV up there. I read out of here, and by the time I got done, I'm like, uh oh, I messed up. So I'm not going to mess up this service. <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah. It says, and when you pray, this is Jesus talking, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Have you ever been in a situation where you say, I'm not going to pray because I don't pray very good? Anybody? I don't pray very well. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now, get rid of that in the name of Jesus. Don't let, don't let any devil in hell tell you that there's a way that you have to pray. You pray, you pray loud and proud. Amen. Right? You know my favorite prayers? My favorite prayers ever was when I was a youth pastor. I used to love to listen to kids pray. You know why? Because they don't know how to pray yet. They don't know how to recite all the right words. They just talk about their lives. And just pray so innocently and purely. And so don't ever think that you can't pray because you can pray because Jesus tells you to. Amen? Amen. All right. Back, that's for free, by the way. <laughs> Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray. Here we go. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, some of you are saying, hey, wait a minute. Where's the vine is the kingdom and the power part? That's the King James Version. <laughs> For if you have, we're not going to go into that today, but there's a reason why it's not in there. For if you forgive other people when they sin, listen, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't, do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Me, you guys are glad you came to church today. Thank you. So how should we pray? We're going to break this down verse by verse, passage by passage, word by word. And we're going to look at this today once again for the first time. So the first thing, if you're taking notes, is our prayer should be intimate. Our prayer should be intimate. I love when my children talk to me, and I love when they call me dad, but I really, really, really love when they call me daddy. My daughters are now in their 20s, and they still call me daddy. See, dad is good, but daddy get you your way. <laughs> when you want dad to respond to something, 
and you look into his eyes and you say, Daddy, ooh, come on, dads, that heart gets to melting. Yeah, you don't want to raise your hands because you want to give your kids any ammunition. But you know, there's something about daddy. This word that Jesus is using here is that word, my daddy in heaven. See, it's an intimate conversation. See, as far as God is away from us, as far as his holiness, he is still intimate with us when we pray. He is right there with us. We should talk to God as if he were in the room with us, not some, what do you think about when you pray? What, how do you vision God, envision God? How do you envision him? Is he some far off, distant being in the sky, or is he right here with you, closer than a brother? And when you pray to God, when you talk to him, do you talk to him as, as daddy? Do you talk to him in an intimate way? Or have you got stuck in the pattern of using big giant words? And you're talking and you're babbling to God and you're saying things just like you would never say this to anybody else. You never talk to anybody else the way you talk to God. Or do you have an intimate conversation with your creator? See, God knit you together in your mother's womb. And, and, and since that time, and since you've been born your soul longs for God. Every soul longs for God. Did you know that they go to villages that have never, ever seen other people other than their village? They are so secluded that they don't, you don't, they don't know their language. They don't know anything about them. But every society always worships something bigger than them because it's in your soul to cry out to Daddy. And oftentimes I'll sit there, and when I'm praying, I'll just imagine myself sitting on my father's lap and looking into his eyes and just talking to him, oftentimes pleading to him, oftentimes crying to him, but spending time in this intimate conversation with the one who knit me together in my mother's womb, the one who knew me then and the one who knows me now. Intimate conversations. So this may sound like it contradicts point number one, but our prayers should be reverential. I'll do my best to explain this. It says, your name is holy. You are set apart. God is, there's a gap between God's holiness and us. God is holy. We are not. There's no almost holy there's no semi-holy. There's holy and there's not holy. We fall in the not holy category. And there's this God in heaven that is creator of all things. You see, God created us. He created the entire universe. God put planets in place and galaxies in place and solar systems. God is just the great creator, but he didn't have to do that. See, God had this perfect union, Father, Son, Holy Spirit together all together. He didn't have to create, but he chose to. Why? Because he's creative. You're made in God's image. Why do we have airplanes? Why do we have cars? Why do we create? Why do we have lights? Why are we designed to create? Because we're made in his image. And so creator God says, hey, you know what? Look at this. This is cool. Look at this planet. Look at this stars. Look at this. Watch this. Poof. And God, God spoke and, you know, talk about the Big Bang. Oh, there was a Big Bang, all right. God spoke and everything. And then he said, you know what? Watch this. We're going to create man. We're going to create this being that's like no other being we've ever created or ever will create. This is man who has the capacity to love like we do. See, nobody can love like humans can love. You say, oh, my dog loves you. No, your dog will go whoever has food. Sorry. Nobody has the capacity to love like humans do, other than God. And God says, we're going to create them, we're going to create them in our own image. And he breathed breath into man. And here you are today. You say, Why would God come down from heaven and die on a cross? Love. Love. Simply because he loves you. So our prayers should be reverential. Listen, I've heard people say, 
I just talk to God like you're talking to your friends. Yeah, yes and no. You don't have to use holy language. Oh, thou heavenly being God above, far, beyond, beyond. You know, like that. You know, use normal words. But let me tell you something. Jesus is not your homeboy. Sorry. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Like I said, there's a gap. We need to recognize that gap. There needs to be this, this unbelievable awe, but there's still intimacy. I, I'll give you an example. It's kind of like this. Oftentimes, you people say, well, God, if you do this, I'll follow you the rest of my life, which is a lie. People break it all the time. But that's kind of like saying this. Imagine if you're a parent, your eight-year-old child comes to you and says this. Okay, Mom. All right, Dad. Here's the deal. <laughs> you, give me your, you give me my way, and I'm going to keep eating all your food, sleeping in your home, and sleeping in your bed. What do you think? You say, bye-bye. Here's your suitcase. And the kid will probably get down to the end of the block and go, <laughs> I'm scared. I want to go back out, right? That's the same Times a billion is us making deals with God. Listen, God, we do not exist so God can please us. We exist so we can please him. He is creator. We are created. And so for us to sit there and make deals with God is like an eight-year-old saying, hey, listen, here's the deal, Dad, Mom and Dad. Oh, let me tell you what the deal is, son. Here's the deal. If you go clean your room, I might let you sleep there tonight. If not, you're going to be in the garage. What do you think about that for a deal, Right? And that's the way that we should approach God with this reverence of, God, you're holy. You're holy, and I'm not. Use that illustration on your kids when you get home. Next point is this. Our prayers should be in the will of God. Our prayers should be in God's will. It says this. Your kingdom and your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Isn't that just the hardest thing for us? Isn't it just the hardest thing for us as human beings? Because our wills are so cool sometimes. Don't we just have it all figured out? But we sit there and we fret and we worry and we fret and we worry. Let me ask you a question. This is something I debated all week whether I should say this or not, but... God told me to, so if you don't like it, get mad at him, not me. Ready? <laughs> when you pray, are you praying or are you just worrying with your eyes closed? When you pray to God, are you praying or are you just worrying with your eyes closed? In other words, are you praying, listen, God, you know everything about me. I'm bringing this to you. Your will be done. God, you're smarter than me. You're bigger than me. You're better than me. You know better than me. So here's what I want, but your will be done. And I'm willing to praise you and worship you just the same, no matter what the conclusion. But it's so hard to give up our will because we want our will to be done. You ever thank God for unanswered prayers? Come on, church. Think about some of the crazy things you used to. Remember that dude you prayed that God would date you when you were young, and now you look at him on Facebook, and you're like, praise Jesus. Right? That dude is cray. And yet we still... Look back and then we say, boy, God bailed me out of that one. And then we say, God, why aren't you doing what? Remember the crazy dude I kept you from? Come on. My will be done. Not Troy's will be done. I got to tell you something. This is the hardest thing for me because I got good ideas, man. I got a good design. Anyone else got a good plan for your life? Yeah. We got stuff, man. And Hey, God, let's go. This, come on. God's like, no, no good. And so we oftentimes say, all right, God, whatever, and then things don't turn out the way we think they should turn out. 
and then we turn away from God, and we're angry with God, or we don't fill in the blank. But when we pray that prayer, which, like I said, most of us know it by heart, it says, thy will be done, not my will be done, right? Last week, uh, so we're working on a, I've talked a lot about church plant, and I got to tell you, someone this week uh, asked me to use different language because church plant has not always gone well where they've been. Church plant has led to division. Let me tell you something loud and clear. We're going to um, add another campus. How's that? To C3? We have another C3 campus. And we have a pastor and his wife, Jesse and Stephanie, who are going to do a great job leading that campus. And they're not going to fail simply because God won't let them and we won't let them fail. This church will not let them fail. So there's no division. I'm going to be preaching at that campus. Jesse will be preaching over here still. We're going to be all one. There's no division. There's no divisiveness in this whatsoever. Jesse's one of my favorite people in the world. As a matter of fact, last week I thought was his, every time I tell him this, I said, dude, that was the best one ever. But every time he gets better and better as a communicator and as a speaker. And I am so proud of him. And so when we talk about church plant, go, yeah, because uh, we're running out of room. I am very nervous about Easter Sunday, to be honest with you. Y'all might, some of the regulars in here, y'all might be standing up in the back because you're going to give up your seat for a guest, right? But, but we don't want that. We want to make room. And plus, we want to, we want to send off other leaders, just like the, old, like the New Testament model that, that Paul gave us. We raise up leaders, we send them out, we plant them, and we allow them to use the gift that's, gifts that God's given them. If we're not doing that, we're failing them, guys. And so it's very important to me that we support them in this. But um, last week, so back on track, last week, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to gear up and we're looking for more volunteers. And, you know, why do we talk about every week, hey, there's a volunteer? Because we, want, we need more volunteers. We need more people to step up and lead and get involved so we can make the burden light. And we had some volunteers that stepped away, and we were just, I was, it, it bugged me. It bugged me, and I was just kind of poopy, to be honest with you, probably for about a good, I don't know, nine hours of my life. I was a little poopy. And God said, what are we doing right now? You ever have a Holy Spirit just put you in check? I love it. Holy Spirit spankings. I don't love them at the time. I love them afterwards. And God said so clear to me, he said, remember what a basket case you were the last time we planted a church with you? And I was like, yeah. Remember how crazy you were? Yeah. Remember how just you were just always worried and all this stuff? Yeah. You know what God did? God said, okay, you don't want to trust me? All right, watch this. And he made us wait till the month before our launch date before we had a church to launch into. He's like, all right, you don't want to trust me? Then you're going to pay. And so God said, do you want to do that again? I said, no, sir. <laughs> he said, then you need to trust me. And you need to believe in me. You need to know that my plan is way better than any feeble little plan you have. I've already seen it. I've already ordained it. It's going to happen when I say it's going to happen. Trust me. Believe in me. And I just looked at him and I said, okay. <laughs> but it's important, guys. It's important that we live our lives that way, knowing that God is going to be in control. He's still in control. He'll always be in control. Okay, next thing is this. Our prayer should include provision. Provision should not dominate our prayers. Our prayer should include provision. The Bible says, give us our, this day our daily bread. I gotta be honest with you guys. I have never prayed that part of this prayer in earnest I have never prayed that part of this prayer in earnest. I've never had to pray, God, please feed me today in my entire 53 years of living. I have never gone. As a matter of fact, my prayer is the other way around. God, please keep me from eating food, right? <laughs> Not this way, it's this way. We have no idea living in this nation what it's like to pray a prayer. Well, maybe some of you do. I never have prayed a prayer, God, please Feed me and my family today. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that if you live in North America and you're hungry, it's your fault. There's so much food and there's so many opportunities to get food that you should never go hungry. 
Okay? And if anyone tells you, hey, I can't feed my family, just say, dude, hold on, I'll be over in a minute. I've got all kinds of resources for you. But anyway, but that's a prayer where God is saying that, listen, in this prayer, Jesus is saying, in this prayer, pray that God meet my needs, not my wants, not my desires, my needs. Jesus doubles down on this later on in Matthew chapter 6. He says, what are you doing? This is Jesus talking. What are you doing? Why are you worrying about your clothes? Have you looked at the lilies in the field? Have you looked at the flowers? I don't care what kind of robe you put on. My flowers are way prettier than you. Have you looked at the birds? Do the birds fly around going, oh my gosh, where are we going to eat? No. There's a worm. Eat it. You'll be good. Don't I care more about you that I created, my crown, pinnacle of my creation, more than I care about a bird? So why are you worrying about that stuff? He says, people who don't know me worry about those things. Check this out. You guys want to hear a new prayer you can pray? This is amazing. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8 says this. First help me never to tell a lie. Any liars in the house? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. First help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. How many of you guys have prayed in the last month, God, don't make me rich? Anybody? God, whatever you do, don't give me a bunch of money. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? Who are the people who are saying there's no God right now? Is it the poor or the rich? The rich. What do I need God for? You Christians use that as a crutch. Because I've got more money than I'll ever spend in six lifetimes. I don't need God for anything. So the psalmist is saying, God, don't let me ever, the person writing this proverb is saying, don't ever let me get too rich because I might deny you and say, who needs God? Who's the Lord? And then he says, but if I'm, if I'm too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. So our prayer should be, God, give me just enough, my daily bread, meet my needs. That's all I need. I asked this a while back, and, and I've got better about this, just as me as a person, I've thought about this, but what if God said, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to give you shelter. I'm going to provide you with food. And I'm going to provide you with clothing. That's it. <laughs> Look at you guys. You're like, I don't know about that. I need my iPhone, right? No TV. No electricity. No lights. Just shelter, food, and clothing. Would you be okay with that? Probably not. And yet God is saying, listen, I will meet your needs. You may not get everything you want, but I'll meet your needs. I'll give you everything that you need. You don't have to worry about stuff like that. And this is how we should pray. See, God already knows what you need. So our, chair, chair, our prayer should include provision, but they should not be the bulk of our prayers. The next thing is, you guys ready for this? It gets tougher. Our prayer should include forgiveness. Ouch. Forgive us our sins just as we forgive those who sin against us. Hmm. You ever thought about what you're praying there and what you're saying? You're saying, hey, God, I want you to forgive me just like I'm forgiving everybody else. I want you to forgive me to the depth and the extent that I forgive everybody in my life. What does everybody mean? Everybody. And then it's so cool because, you know, you think they're probably saying, well, I don't think he means that you have to forgive. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Is it? Jesus doubles down. Remember what we read later on? And just remember, because if you don't forgive those on earth, God won't forgive you. So Jesus says it twice. If he says it twice, he probably means it. Listen, every time I talk about forgiveness, I make sure I say this. There are people here. I know for a fact that have dealt with things, abuses, physical, mental, emotional, um, spiritual, um, sexual abuse that I, I've never fathomed. And it's just the worst thing ever. 
And I'm not saying that you have to hang out with that person and you have to just be with that person and be buddies with them again. But let me tell you, you have to be able to say in your heart that I have released them. God, they are yours. And I pray that they will fix what's wrong with them and they will never hurt anybody ever again. That's my prayer. But I'm not going to hold stuff against people anymore. I'm not going to allow someone's name to be spoken in my presence and me go, Ugh. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to give anybody that authority and that power over my life. Because that's what you're doing. When you say, you know, that person comes to your mind or that person is talked about and you have to, and you say, Ugh, that means you haven't forgiven them yet. And they have a power over you. You need to be able to say, hey, you know what? That was a terrible time and it happened, but they're released. God's in control of them. It's not my job to be their boss and to be their judge. My job is to forgive them. So I forgive them. And you don't even have to talk to them again if you don't want to. That's totally up to you. But you need to be able to say in your heart that I forgive and I've let you go and I've released you. That's a tough prayer, isn't it? And we pray. Isn't it funny how we say that Lord's Prayer and we say, we, we remember, most of us have memorized it. And we say that, forgive us, and we just say it. And God's like, you sure? Are you saying that and you really want me to do it that way because you know about this person over here? Well, yeah, but you don't really mean that. Yeah, I mean that person. Forgiveness, it's a big deal. The last thing is our prayers should ask for protection. Don't let us give into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We're going to kind of wrap this up kind of the same way I started it. I'm talking about fears. What are you afraid of? What is keeping you from trusting God completely? And it usually revolves around a fear. For me, not measuring up, I, it's a fear. And God is saying, you know what? You're not trusting me in that area, Troy. You're not trusting that I'm enough. You're not, you're not really believe. Why do you think I pray the same prayer every week? God, use me more of you, less of me, because I have to continue to tell myself that because God's saying, dude, it's got nothing to do with you. You realize if I didn't show up every weekend, you'd be an idiot? Yeah. God is saying, you need to get rid of that fear in your life and trust that I'm going to use you. And no matter what it is in your life, that God's going to, let me ask you this question. What do you pray over your kids? What do you pray when you pray for your kids? Do you, oh God, just don't let them get hurt today. Don't let anyone be mean to them. Or do you pray, God, let my child be fearless. God, I pray that my daughter is a princess warrior for you. God, I pray that my son will do things that I never dreamed of doing. He'll have no fear in his life, and he'll trust you no matter what you call him to do. If you call him to Africa, he's going to go to Africa. You call him to Indonesia, he's going to go to I don't care what. God, I want my children to be better than I ever thought about being. Amen. And pray powerful prayers over your children and let them know what you're praying for them. Because sometimes, I mean, let's just get real, church. We can pray some pretty wimpy, unlofty prayers over our kids. Helping to come home safe? I mean, come on. It's kind of a given in most situations. But what about prayers of God help my child to invest in somebody who's hurting? But it requires us to trust. Speaking of trust, I got something I want to show you guys. I've been practicing this all week long. And I am so excited to show you guys my skills you guys see the balloon over there? How many of you guys have been wondering what the balloon's doing there? How many OCD people are like, that, how come there's not a balloon on that side too? This is just throwing me off. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take out this. I, I've been practicing. I'm going to take out this. How many of you guys, I want a show of hands. How many of you guys think I can shoot that balloon from here and take it out? How many? Raise your hand. I mean, you guys are not very nice, some of you. I'm just sitting there, no confidence. I've been practicing. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. How many of you guys think I can take out the balloon? Wow, I know who likes me and who doesn't. Okay, good. All right, leave your hands up. How many of you guys believe me that I can take this out so much you come up here and hold that balloon in your hand? 
I got some half hands. You can't have half hands. None of this stuff. No, you're either in it or not. You're either in it or not, okay? All right, good, man. Look at all you faithful people. All eight of you, I love you. All right. How many of you guys are so sure that I could take this balloon and shoot it from this distance that you're willing to hold it in your mouth? Leave your hand up. Hold it in your mouth. You're going to hold it in your mouth. Wow, look at this. Alex, it's okay if I hurt you. Come here, buddy. Okay, Alex, I want you to stand over there, and I want you to turn towards the crowd and hold. What do you mean, no? I've been practicing. <laughs> guys. Guys. No, move that way further. That way. This is too close. How many of you guys really think I can do this? Look at you, faithful. All right. All right, you guys ready? Now, don't like be making noise. This is important. This is my son-in-law, who I love, that I was over here. All right, you guys ready? Shh. You guys are sickos. I'm not going to shoot the balloon out of his mouth. Are you crazy? What's wrong with you people? You guys are all going, <laughs> oh, this is so cool. No, it's not cool. It's psych psycho stuff. I would never do that in church, right? <laughs> so there's no point to that. I just want to pray and go home. I just wanted to scare my, no, I'm just kidding. See, here's the thing. Oftentimes we'll say, yeah, yeah, you trust God. Oh, yeah, I trust God. Darn right I do. Yeah? Do you trust God with your life, with your sexuality, with your marriage, with your parenting, with your money, with your status, with your job situation, enough to trust him and just believe in him that he's got better for you? See, because just like when he started to get real, right? You guys are like, yeah, we trust you, Pastor Troy. You going to hear that? Are you willing to put your body on the line? Oh, no, I don't trust you that much. But oftentimes, that's how it is with God. God says, listen, I've got this. I am still on the throne. I am still the King of kings and Lord of lords. But what about Donald Trump? I am the God of Donald Trump. I'm the God of Nancy Pelosi. I'm the God of it all. I am still the king of kings. I'm the Lord of lords. Do you trust me? <laughs> no, but I got to tell this person on Facebook that they're wrong. <laughs> Do you trust me? And God is shouting that out to us every day. And listen, let me tell you something about God. The less we trust, the more he tests. I've seen it in my own life. The less we trust the more he tests. Why did God wait till a month before our launch of this church for us to find a building? Because I wasn't trusting. I was crying and crying out, and what are we going to do? We've got a great church. We just don't have a building. What are you waiting for? God's saying, for you to trust me. For you to trust me. And it was. It was a point where I just said, God, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm staying awake at night. I'm stressing out. I'm not going to be a good leader in this position, in this way. So I trust you. What are you not trusting God with this morning? Because we all have something. We all have something in our lives that we're not giving over to God. And what is that? What are you not trusting God with that he's saying, I'm your heavenly father. I'm daddy. I'm daddy. And I will never leave you. I'll never, I'll never forsake you. My plan may not go the way that you want your plan to go, but my plan is always better. Let's pray. God, we love you, and we praise you, and we worship you. We thank you that you're a trustworthy God. God, there's no being on this planet, there's no being ever created that we can trust the way that we can trust you. And when all said and done, we give you our lives. 
God, I'm praying this morning that people will just put their walls down this morning. That they will not worry with their eyes closed, but they'll pray with fervor, trusting in the mighty King. I pray, Father, that the people that are here this morning that are living with anxiety and God, I even pray a bold prayer for those that are medicating themselves to get rid of their anxiety, Father, that you would take that away. That you would heal them of that. God, what I'm not saying is for them to jump off of medication, but what I'm saying is for you to reveal to them in their life at the time when you have healed them of this and they've let it go, and they've trusted you completely. God, I pray for the marriage right now where somebody is not trusting you enough to stay in the fight for their husband, to stay in the fight for their wife. I pray they would trust you with that. I pray people who are struggling here with job situations that once again are worrying with their eyes closed. I pray, Father, that they would give it to you. They would completely trust in you with all their heart. I'm going to pause for just a moment. I want everyone to keep your eyes closed and your head down, and I want to ask you a question. Are you able to trust God? In other words, are you able, meaning that do you have a relationship with him? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Is He the Lord of your life? If not, we're going to pray a prayer in just a minute. We're going to all pray this prayer together. At the end of that prayer, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. But the trust thing that we're talking about and allowing God to be the Lord of your life will never happen unless he's your savior. So every head bowed, every eye closed, I want you to pray a prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner and I believe in my heart that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe in my heart that you rose from the, on the third day to save my soul. So I commit my life to you from this day forward. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you pray that prayer for the first time, I want you to look me in the eye, put your hand up, and put your hand back down. It's between you and God. This is your day. This is the opportunity for you to say, God, you are my Lord. You are my Savior. I trust you completely. If that's you, raise your hand, look me in the eye, and put your hand back down. Anybody? I'll wait just a second. Don't let your pride get in the way. Don't let your ego get in the way. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? God, we thank you that you're trustworthy. We thank you, Father, that we can come here today freely and worship you. God, you've given us so much and you've blessed us so much. Help us to appreciate that. Help us to recognize that. Help us to worship you and praise you in every way of our lives, in every area of our lives. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of the day. I ask that we unwrap it and live it to its fullest. In Jesus' name.
giving us his word through Troy today. And I know personally that I have a lot to work on for it. And just want to ask that you, you just, you, you grant your will in my life. Just want to ask God in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Man, you don't know the pressure it is of having to pray in front of people after an entire message about prayer. Two messages. Two. I figured that the second time would be easier. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, uh, But all joking aside, the, the thing that stuck out for me most in both services at this point is God's will in my life. I often try to put my will on God and, you know, have him do what I want him to do instead of you know, allowing God to put his will on me because I, I know the better way to do things. <laughs> or so I think because I'm a control freak until God's <laughs> like, hey, yeah, you, you go ahead and do your thing. And I realize I probably shouldn't have done that. And God kind of puts me in my place and, you know, his will gets done regardless of what I think. So that's my biggest struggle. Yeah, thank you, Troy. Such a great message. And, and with that being, you know, of course, on prayer, um, our amazing prayer team on my right, your left. Uh, Please, uh, please allow them the opportunity to pray alongside of you, to play with, pray with you, whether it's something on your heart from the message or a praise or something that you'd like to just have that pray over you. They would love to do that, so please allow them the opportunity. Um, as it is the ending of our message and of our, our morning with you in afternoon, early afternoon, um, there are snacks in the back, but please pick up your uh, kiddos before. They want to enjoy the snacks too, and we hope you have a great week. Have a good one.